practice becomes directly responsible for the health of an entire community. And proud indeed is the doctor who brings about such a change. Something like that happened to the frontier doctor when he stopped off to visit an old friend of his college days. Rex Allen stars as the frontier doctor. I was on my way back to Rising Springs from a medical convention in Kansas City when I decided to stop off at an oil town named Richville to see an old friend. The old friend was a former patient of mine, a lawyer named Harry Clark who had come west to make a name for himself and had surprised all of us by doing just that. I found out where Harry Clark's office was and headed in that direction. see Mr. Clark, if I may. Mr. Clark isn't... I'm sorry, sir, but are you new in town? Oh, yes, I just came in on the stagecoach. Oh, then of course you wouldn't know. Mr. Clark is... He's passed away. He's passed away? Last week, sir, it was quite sudden. Sudden? What was wrong with him? Some kind of infection. Peri... Peri something or other. Peritonitis? That could be, sir. I... I only know it was such a shame. And in the prime of life was so much depending on him. So much depending on him? Yes. He was defending the poor homesteaders. They were being dispossessed and driven from their land by the oil companies. Young Mr. Hamilton, his junior partner, has taken over the case. Mr. Hamilton isn't in right now. He's in court. Could I tell him you called? No, don't bother him. I, he wouldn't know me anyway. I'd better be on my way. Bye. Good day, sir. The unexpected news of Harry Clark's death unnerved me. It's like that when someone your own age dies. It's almost as if you had died a little yourself. I turned into the nearest lunchroom to collect myself over a cup of coffee. Glum, stranger. I just got some bad news. A friend of mine passed away. Oh, sorry. Friend of yours happened to be Harry Clark, mister? Yes. Did you know him? Yep. Friend of mine, too. Friend of lots of folks around here. And don't you think that them that controls the big oil money didn't know about it, too? They made sure that Harry wouldn't stay healthy. Easy, Pop. Don't go stirring up that kind of talk around here. Well, it's about time somebody had gumption enough to speak out what's on the town's mind. Just drink your coffee and pretend he ain't here. Oh, I don't mind. It's good to know Harry was well liked. James Caldwell Peabody is the name, sir. Me mind? Sit down. <laughs> Thought I owned some land around here once till the oil syndicate and their gun hawks chased me off in it. Nothing but a janitor now, but it's an honest living. I'm Dr. Bill Baxter from Rising Springs. Doctor, eh? Medical doctor? Yes, sir. Uh, would you be come to town to look into the manner of Harry Clark's passion now, would you, Doc? Pop, I'm warning you to take that talk outside. You start a fight in here most every day. Oh, go on, warm yourself. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Uh. Uh, do you know anything about the big uh, property fight that's waging in this here town, Doc? The people versus the syndicate that's gobbling up all the oil land? You know anything about that? No, I hadn't heard about it. 
Well, there's a lot of folks in this town who's got a strong hunch that Harry Clark was murdered by the syndicate. Pop! You don't pay attention to him, mister. He's just an old busybody. Everybody knows about his tall tales. Tall tales, eh? Yes. Yeah. You wait till I get on that witness stand tomorrow. I'll tell this town a thing or two. You betcha, betcha, betcha. You betcha, betcha, betcha. Hmm. Are you sure that you didn't come to this town to investigate the reason for Clark's sudden death? Hmm? Look, I've got to get out of here. My stagecoach is overdue. Hey, there's one of that darn oil crowd right now. I thought we taught you to keep your mouth shut. As long as you're going to be around here a couple of days, I reckon we'd better pick up your gear and find you a hotel room. First class hotel right around the corner. paper in the wastebasket of the county clerk's office. Not just scraps of paper, Doc, but ten money wrappers. You know, them bands made out of paper that comes wrapped around money when it comes in bundles? And each one had a thousand dollars marked on it. I also found a manila envelope that had registered mail marked on it. So you took all these wrappings over to Mr. Clark. You figure they killed him for that? Why not? We got a new county clerk in this here county. Slocum's his name. Never did trust him. I can smell a bribe a mile away. Why, he could do away with the record book of our property deeds and we'd all be sunk. But your own coroner testified the cause of death. Acute peritonitis. I don't mean the same. Coroner and the county clerk are the same man in this county. Why, Slocum had the power to have a man like Clark murdered, cover over a wrong deed. And as coroner, he could say that he died of almost anything now, couldn't he? Wouldn't be that easy, Pop. There'd be a doctor's report at the time of death. Well, there weren't no doctor present at the time of death, like I told you. Uh, Clark dropped dead right outside of his office. And the coroner's jury just took Slocum's word for it. Slocum? Slocum, yeah, that's the county clerk coroner I was telling you about. He performed the autopsy. Why would he want to falsify a death certificate? For money, what else? What else would a feller falsify and steal and commit murder for? Very serious accusing, Pop. I couldn't just take your word for it. We don't have to. Just ask anybody in this town. Why don't we forget it, huh? It's none of my business anyway. I reckon I'm mistooken in you, Dr. Baxter. From the way you talked, I thought you was a friend to Harry Clark's. <laughs> Hello, sir. Mr. Hamilton is in now, but he has someone with him. If you would care to wait. Oh, yes, I... Oh, Mr. Hamilton. This is a friend of Mr. Clark's I was telling you about. Mr... Baxter. Dr. Bill Baxter. Oh, how do you do, Doctor? Miss Wilson said you've been here. Come on in. I'm just between appointments. Thank you. Have a seat, Doctor. Thank you. Well, the trial goes into its last day tomorrow. It's a lot of coming and going to try to save the sinking ship. It's as bad as that? No use trying to kid myself. I've always had a good healthy respect for Harry Clark's judgment. I don't think he would take on a junior partner who wasn't just as honest as he was. I'm not sure I know just how to take that remark, Doctor. You'd have more to gain by winning this case than losing it, right? Certainly. If Harry took the case, I think he felt the cause was just and that he had a good chance of winning it. Right again? That happens to be the way I feel myself. And why are you losing? Look here, I resent this kind of prying, sir. Do you think Harry Clark was murdered? 
That's a big question, Doctor. From what I hear, the stakes are, too. Just what are they? Very simple. The people who homesteaded the land got their deeds when this territory became a state. The cattle barons who own the oil syndicate claim the mineral and oil rights under a federal grant before the homesteaders moved in. And the original land grant carries more weight. Is that about it? That's about it. The moral right is on the side of the homesteaders, but their legal right to the land is up to the judge. The law is the law. I talked to an old fellow named Peabody. He's a janitor over at the courthouse. Old Pop, everybody knows about him. He's considered a crank. Told me he was going to testify. I'm putting him on the stand tomorrow, but I don't expect anybody to believe the town storyteller. Any port in the storm, though. These money wrappers that Pop found and took over to Mr. Clark, do you consider them a motive for murder? I do. But so far, those wrappers have never been found among Harry's briefs or effects. You ever think of checking that autopsy or running another? That wouldn't be easy to arrange, Doctor. But if you could prove it had some bearing on the case, maybe... I'm sorry. I have only your suspicion and that of a, an eccentric old man. I suppose you're right. Well... Nice to meet you. Goodbye, Doctor. and the reference the waitress made to Miss Wilson, I made it a point to visit the coroner's office. Uh, what can I do for you, sir? Your name's Slocum? Yes, sir. I'm Dr. Bill Baxter, Rising Springs. Pardon me. I'll see you later. Oh, good day. I'm sorry, doctor. I'm very busy at the moment. I know. Do you mind if I assist with the autopsy? You? What for? Well, Pop was a friend of mine. Sorry, Doctor. Highly irregular. Read my reports later. Good day, sir. You were sure Pop died of strychnine poisoning? I didn't say I was sure. Only an autopsy could prove that. But he had all the symptoms. Titanic convulsions, respiratory failure. All right. Granted, he was poisoned. There's still the question, who and how? The waitress in the cafe placed your secretary as the last person with him. She could have slipped the poison in his coffee. But think what that means. She was here before I came. Harry's secretary. He brought her from the East? Uh, no. He hired her here. All these briefs you've been using in this case, they go over her desk, don't they? Naturally. She must have had Harry's full confidence. Up till right now, she's had mine. Well, she's not here. I can't believe it. And there's only one way to make certain. That's an autopsy on Pop. You uh, don't believe the coroner's report of heart failure, huh? Do you? Then why don't you give me a chance to do an autopsy? All right. You'll have it. You'll have it if I have to. Never mind, just stick tight to your hotel room till you hear from me. I have a feeling I've been followed ever since I hit town. Let's get out of here. Keep low. It was almost midnight when Hamilton called for me, telling me everything was ready. 
From the way Hamilton acted, I knew that although he had a key to the coroner's office, he did not have official permission for the autopsy. But since he didn't volunteer an explanation, I knew better than to ask. This was no time to let legal red tape stand in the way of establishing a possible clue of murder. The laboratory's in here, Doc. I suggest you pull the outside shades down before you start to work. Just one thing, did you question Miss Wilson? I thought we'd better wait for the results of the autopsy. I'm keeping her working late, though. Typing material for tomorrow's session in court. She won't close the office till I get back. I'll be as quick as I can. What I had to do wasn't pleasant, but it had to be done. And the laboratory was well equipped for the job the coroner should have done in the first place. Well, Doc? Strict nine. No. Hard to believe, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it sure is. It's something you don't want to believe. Look out, Doc. There's no light on in there now. Oh, I tell you, I saw one. Go on, Doc. You're the key to the case. Out the back way. Go on, beat it. Go on, Doc. Halt! In the name of the law! Go out to the other I knew what Hamilton meant. I was the key to his case, and now he was giving me this chance to get away. Oh! You frightened me. Did I, Miss Wilson? Yes. Why? Well, I didn't think anything could frighten you, Miss Wilson. I beg your pardon, Doctor. I mean, anyone who could poison an old man, cold-bloodedly drop a pellet of strychnine in an old man's coffee. You wouldn't think a person like that would frighten very easily, would you, Miss Wilson? I don't. Really, sir? I haven't the least idea what you're talking about. Is that how you poisoned Harry Clark? Did you put it in his coffee, too? I understand he was found just outside on the street. Did he just have time to stagger out of here, trying to get help, gasping for breath, while you stood right about where you are now and watched him, Miss Wilson? Is that how it was? You get out of here. You get out of here right now or I'll... <sighs> Go ahead and scream for the constable. In fact, I'll help you. Better yet, why don't both of us go over and see him, together? That's him. recognized one of the men as the coroner Slocum. The other was the man who had been watching me since I'd hit town. The man who was in the coroner's office earlier in the day. Tie his feet. We'll put him down in here. Turn around. I knew it was now or never.
door led to a cellar, all right. I thought I'd be safe from the fire underground. I was wrong. It was a storeroom for the explosives used in the oil fields. the firefighters my problems they were only too willing to help it was after daybreak before I got back to town doc where have you been I've had people looking all over for you where have you been I just got out on bail Slocum tried to kill me he left me out in that oil fire to burn doc I'm sure glad you're alive We've got the oil syndicate and Slocum dead to rights in the charge of conspiracy and murder. And you're going to help me prove it. Just a minute. I've been looking for you, stranger. You're wanted for breaking an entry along with him last night. Now, he'll probably get you out on bail, but at least I've done my duty. Forget it, Constable. We've got a case to win. Now, don't try that fast lawyer talk on me, Hamilton. This stranger goes to jail, and you can both do your talking in court. Well, you took the law into your hands last night. I guess it's my turn now. <laughs> Since we're temporarily without law and order, we'd better go see Slocum herself before he gets any ideas about leaving town after he sees me. All right, Doc, let's go. It's all over with us, don't you understand? Hamilton knows the old man was poisoned. Oh, knowing something's one thing, but proving it is something else. Doc Baxter's dead. Without him, Hamilton's all washed up. For lack of evidence, they'll laugh that two-bit lawyer right out of town. You're a fool. There are other lawyers. The 10,000 we got, that's just chicken feed. When the court decides in our favor, we get another 50,000. Please. Calm yourself, Let's Jane. get out of here Calm now. Yourself. Please. Oh. Let's go. All right, all right. Get over there. I was expecting you, Constable. Here's the man you're after. You might want to question her, too. I won't take the blame for it alone. I won't. He's as guilty as I am. I'll tell you everything you want to know. Everything do you hear. I'm guilty. Sure, I'm guilty. But he is, too. Well, I sure wish I knew what was going on around here. Suppose you take us all over to the judge's chambers, Constable. Then you'll get everything straight. That's a good idea. Here you are, Constable. Thanks, stranger. Will you trust us to follow you in a few minutes? We've got to pass the word to the squatters to fight that fire. From now on, it'll be their own property they'll be saving. You bet I will. Let's go, Doc. All right, come on. You too. Come on. Miss Wilson's confession uncovered the oil company's conspiracy and the judge canceled their land grant. The settlers regained possession of their property and became richer than their fondest dreams. Miss Wilson and Slocum were quickly indicted by the court for the murders of Pop and Harry Clark. Richville was lavish with their praises. 
their thanks made me feel guilty. For I couldn't help feel old Pop Peabody and Harry Clark, wherever they might be, had a hand in the fighting and winning of the case for the settlers. Thank you.